after 20 years of trying, is this finally the year Kyle Busch breaks through and wins the Daytona 500? I'm now joined by the one and only Dale Tanhart. Dale, it's great to see you. It's been a couple months since we last spoke. I hope you had a great off season because this week is very busy. I know I'm busy. I'm sure you're busy. We're both heading out to Daytona tomorrow. Daytona 500 weekend. Uh, Dale, we're here to talk favorites, long shots, everything, and anyone in between. I want to start things off, though. Are there any teams or manufacturers that you have a particular eye on this week? I look at Toyota because they've got strength in numbers, finally. They have nine key partner Toyotas in this race, assuming Jimmy's able to qualify in. I think that will be something interesting to watch, but is there a specific team that you are watching closely early this week yeah kind of how we talked about a couple months ago which when we talked a couple months ago uh i feel like the landscape hasn't changed a whole lot i mean we've seen a few of these open teams come on in but when we did talk last time a couple months ago i was all on rfk and i feel like that it really hasn't changed and to extend further upon that idea i think ford i think you still got to look at ford because of how strong they've been on the super speedways yeah they didn't win all the races last year but Joey Logano came up a no short in the Daytona 500. They went to Atlanta. Joey Logano won against Brad Keselowski when Ford dominated that race. Talladega, they had a Ford going for the win with Ryan Blaney before Bubba Wallace crashed. You also had Brad K in that mix, had Brad K in that mix as well. Come back to Atlanta. Brad Keselowski in a Ford dominates that race before the rain kind of dictates who wins that one. And then fall Talladega, you had another Ford dominated race and photo finish between two Fords. So You've got the best super speedway racers with Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, a guy that's being slept on, and, and more to that party. And I just really like where Ford's at, how competitive they've been. And I think they're going to be the front runners again in uh, securing the win for the Daytona 500. Yeah, I've got some stats here that actually back up your point. For one, RFK, uh, their two Fords led 74 laps combined in last year's Daytona 500, so they were the class of the field, I would say. And Toyota, I believe, is still looking for their first super speedway win in the next-gen era. Hey, this new car, if it's ever going to happen, I think this new Toyota Camrys, they're going to finally get it done. But uh, good stuff there. Are there any good value picks among the favorites? Like, we mentioned some names there. A lot of Fords, like Blaney, Keselowski, Logano among the favorites. Denny Hamlin going for his fourth Daytona 500. One name in particular that I've noticed in recent days has moved up the list, is now among the favorites, is Kyle Busch, who is in his 20th year trying to win the Daytona 500. I believe this is his 19th actual attempt. Uh, what do you make of Kyle Busch's sudden rise? Do you think that's that's fool's gold, or is there something there? Yeah, it's scary because I love narrative plays, right? And the Daytona 500 is so superstitious when it comes to just the juju, and, and, and juju is the best way to, to put it. And this number eight car has the juju with Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> winning the Daytona 500 in the eight car 20 years ago this year, and then Dale Earnhardt Jr. winning the Daytona 500 in the 88 car 10 uh -huh. years ago this year. Kyle Busch brought the eight car back to victory lane at Talladega last year. Uh, I think there's a lot of money being put on Kyle Busch, not because of the resume, but because of the narrative. And you look at DraftKings, he's sitting at 11 to 1 right now as a co-favorite, which is crazy. Yeah. When you consider he's above Ryan Blaney, he's above Joey Logano, he's above Brad Keselowski, guys that have been way more successful at super speedways. Uh, but I will say over on Bet Rivers, Kyle Busch is still at 16 to 1. Uh, so that would be the best place if you wanted to bet on Kyle Busch. I've been thinking about it, man. I've been thinking on bet on Kyle Busch, especially with what happened to the 2023 Daytona 500. Yeah, where he came up so close. He was leading at the 500 mile mark, just lost in overtime. Yep, that caution where Daniel Suarez spun, and it all changed there. So, man, it's like I want to bet on Kyle Busch because I feel like the narrative and the juju, the superstitious number Dale Jr. connection is there. Uh, but I just feel like everybody's betting on this eight car, man. So it's going to, for me, it's going to be a game time decision on, on where, <laughs> on how I feel about betting on Kyle Busch, probably going to be Saturday, uh, before I make that decision. I don't think you're going to lose a lot of value on him, um, mm -hmm. le leading up to the green flag time in Daytona. But I think if there's one guy that we're sleeping on, it's Joey Logano. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're talking about Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Blaney, your Pied Pipers, the guys that have been leading the laps. But Joey Logano is a guy who has been pretty snake-bitten at these super speedways over the past few years. But he is a Daytona 500 champion. 
He's won at Talladega multiple times. He did win at Atlanta spring of 2023. He's a great super speedway racer that's had a lot of bad luck. And he went to Daytona in 2023 and finished runner-up in the Daytona 500 and then followed that up with another top 10, I believe a top five in the fall race at Daytona in August. So when you think about what America hates, uh, Eric, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs have pissed off America for the final time with a Super Bowl win against the 49ers. Denny Hamlin goes out and wins the Bush Light Clash uh, and pisses off everybody with his famous, I beat your favorite driver, which apparently he's going to retire. I, I wish you would, and I, I love the energy. But <laughs> think about the narrative that America never gets what they want. I rode that narrative with Denny Hamlin when I picked him to win the Bush Light Clash. I feel like Joey Logano winning the Daytona 500 is an outcome that not a lot of people are expecting and everybody's going to be upset about. So you want a narrative play? That, that goes well and connects with some statistical data, give me Joey Logano, 14-1. to 1. Hey, fair enough. It seems like uh, whether it's Blaney, Logano, shoot, even Austin Sindrick, there's always a Penske car or two at the front of these things at the very end. Uh, let's talk long shots. Long shots, I guess, have won really the last three Daytona 500s, from McDowell to Sindrick to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. last year. Uh, is there anyone further down on the list that you are watching closely? Yeah, look, uh, Justin Haley. I, I, I hate to beat the RFK dead horse like we've been mm. doing, um, but Justin Haley's a guy that people are sleeping on. He actually was running really well at the Bushlight Clash. I don't know what it is about the Coliseum and Justin Haley. And now it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what car he's in. He, he runs top 10, borderline top five. He had an issue there at the end and had to retire. But uh, Justin Haley's a guy that's been a solid super speedway racer for years now was very dominant in the Xfinity Series when he was with Colleague, and he's had some glimpses. He's been close. He is a winner at Daytona due to rain back in 2019. Can't take that away. Hey, guess what, Eric? A win is a win. It counts. Uh, Justin Haley's done it before. Like I said, he's done in the Xfinity Series. He's looking at you know 70-ish to 1, 65 to 1, and he's got RFK power under the hood. The thing about this, when you throw in David Reagan as well, RFK's got a lot of help out there this weekend. I mean, this is potentially a race where RFK, if those satellite cars are good enough, they could really control this race with, with what they've been doing with Brad Kay and Chris Busher. Now you add the satellites in with that horsepower that uh, coming out of the RFK shop. Give me, give me a Justin Haley, 70 to 1. You can find a top five for him around 7 to 1, 7.5 to 1. I think those are good bets uh, when we talk underdogs for the Daytona 500. Yeah, I really like uh, Haley and David Reagan, like looking at top five, top 10 bets, because I could easily see one or both of them pushing a Busher or Brad to the win. Uh, 17 and 6 finished 1 2 last time we raced at Daytona last summer. So the RFK hype, I think, is very well justified. Uh, Dale, before I let you go, I appreciate your time this morning. Uh, I'll kind of put you on the spot here. Tonight is Daytona 500 pole quality. Qualifying. I don't know if you've had the chance to study the odds for qualifying or if this is something you're particularly interested in betting, but just off the cuff, who's your front row for this year's Daytona 500? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, Hendrick Motorsports has just been so freaking dominant. Me and you were talking before we started recording. We actually were flabbergasted to see that Alex Bowman's had seven consecutive front row starts. He's, he's go, I think he's going for his seventh. He's at, going he's for at six. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Which I've already forgotten. Is, yeah, no, it's interesting because I, I was wondering if last year that would change when Greg Ives got off the pit box, it's right? True. He had a new crew chief. Uh, it did not. And last year, we were way more fortunate, Eric, because they gave me Alex Bowman at 16 to 1 to win the poll, and I took it. Uh, right now, we're looking at 4 to 1 or 4.5 to 1 <laughs> for Alex Bowman to win the poll. So a lot has changed over uh, the course of one year. And his Hendrick teammates are right there with him. Kyle Larson, who's had a poll, he's been on the front row as well. He's right there at four to one, four and a half to one. And then Chase Elliott, William Byron, seven to one. Um, the direction I'm going to go here, you got to think about the Stuart Haas cars that have been good at the super speedways. Maybe a Briscoe or Gragson or Ryan Priest. Maybe throw those guys in a bet. Uh, but I think the two bets I know I'm going to place, which I haven't placed them yet. I haven't placed them yet. Probably when we get off here, we're going to go find our way to the casino. Uh, I'm going to take Alex Bowman and Chase Elliott. I love the narrative play about these two guys who – had a really bad 2023, both of them did, uh, with injuries and, and not making the playoffs. I love how the Daytona 500 is about narrative when it comes especially to qualifying. Danica Patrick, 2013, 
Austin Dillon return to the three car, mm -hmm. Jeff Gordon final year, and more. So uh, I like to ride that narrative. Plus, you get you know, the connection with they do have the speed to win the pole. So it's not just all juju and narrative <laughs> when it comes to those two Hendrick cars. So Chase Elliott at seven to one. I love the narrative around it. And it's a Hendrick car. Alex Bowman, four and a half to one. Love the narrative. And it's a Hendrick car. So those would be my two. That is going to be my front row for the Daytona 500. I like it. I'm going with Alex Bowman. And this isn't maybe as big of a narrative play, although we've talked about RCR's success at Daytona, the history of the eight. But I've got Kyle Busch joining Bowman on the front row tonight for this Sunday's Daytona 500. A lot of talk in this episode about Juju going with your gut. Uh, but I guess that's kind of what you have to do at Daytona. Daytona, one of the toughest tracks to predict. It's easy to predict who will be fast, but it's nearly impossible to predict who's going to be out front at the end of 200 plus laps dale uh, thank you so much for being on the show you've got a new youtube channel that you just uh debuted just premiered correct can you tell some folks at home where to find you yeah dale tanhart on on all social media platforms but the youtube is, is brand new as you said uh, as of about a week ago and there's gonna be a lot of betting content on this youtube channel i'm gonna have some educational stuff on how to get involved in nascar betting how to sign up and uh, maybe some more detailed content uh, along with my live stream, uh, Dale Center, which is where I go comprehensive in the NASCAR betting world. So yeah, check that out. Thank you for that plug. And uh, look, guys, it's not all about statistics. It's not all about data. As we've seen in the last three Daytona 500s, we've had some unexpected winners. I think this is the year that that changes. I think you're going to get a Hall of Fame caliber guy that wins the 500. But use your gut. The juju is there. Sometimes it's hard to find the words on what that superstition is, but the Daytona 500 is something else. Use your gut uh, to, to make your pick. Sometimes that's the best option. I love it. I love it. Thanks for being on the show, Dale. See you at Daytona. Thank you, Eric.